I worked out of my house for years and just outgrew the space. And you know, downtown Siler City, unfortunately, is like a lot of other small towns. Walmart comes in on the highway, and the downtown sort of dies. And so downtown space is cheap, um, and um, it's, it's just worked out to be a very nice, nice shop. I, uh, I was in Durham and I had a shop there uh, when the economy kind of tanked and my business dropped 40%. Uh, I couldn't afford it there anymore. And so I, I kind of went in limbo for uh, about 15 months. I think initially I was paying them by the week and then, <laughs> then, we, then I was coming out here more part time and then it's, we transitioned to basically splitting, splitting the, uh, the cost out here. I don't think it would work out nearly as well if we were doing, you know, very similar or even potentially competing work. But because I don't work in furniture and he doesn't necessarily work in yeah. in vessel work, we're able to kind of kind of throw some thoughts at each other. I always liked working with my hands, and for a long time, I in my profession, I worked with my hands. I had an uncle in law who made furniture. You know, I just was like kind of mesmerized by it. So. You know, I started with, you know, I guess where a lot of hobbyists would start is bird houses and, <laughs> you know, just more carpentry as well. When the corporate telecom business went through a rough area, the company started laying off people. I was like, you know, here's a chance I could take a severance and use that to kind of finance, you know, the next thing. And I didn't know what the next thing was, to be honest. And then one day I said, I, people make a living doing this, you know, somehow, that's what I'm going to do. I have to do things much different than Joel. I have to build 15 of the same exact thing, same shape at one time to make it make sense financially. To really make a business doing this, it has to be, it's more about design than the process. It's kind of contemporary art deco or simple art deco. You know, I like to work with a lot of uh, exotic woods or exotic figuring of woods. And the other thing that I fell in love with was veneering. This is probably not going to be sticky enough. If every city of reasonable size had a Piedmont craftsman in it, we would have plenty of places to uh, show our work, but it's a rarity to find that. Being a member of PCI, um, lends credibility to, yep. toward a person's work. Um, inside the world of, of fine craft, you know, they're, they're very well known for the high standard of their work. Um, and as I've developed, um, you know, my work, I, I, it's one of the, the organizations I still continue to be very proud to have my name associated with. Wood turning essentially involves using a, a lathe, which is a machine that, that turns a hunk of wood in a circle really quickly so you can carve it. The traditional wood turning is turning solid pieces of wood. Uh, usually the guys will go out with a chainsaw and cut up a hunk of a log and you know turn it into a bowl or something like that. And I was never real interested in doing that. Um, I really enjoy you know a total wood shop experience. And so I, I started initially constructing work and, and have continued to do that. I'll probably make 100, 150 pieces of varying sizes a year. At any given time, I've got 15 or 20 different designs that, uh, that I work in, and so I'm making multiples of things, so it is very repetitive. That being said, each piece is handmade, so each piece has to be done you know, to a, a high level of precision. My sense of design is very classically oriented. The forms are, are pretty much inspired by ancient Greek, Roman, and, and Asian forms. But then I take those and, and do some things with construction and color and maybe negative space to, to make them into a sort of a whole new thing. Really, the, the defining element of my work is, has to do with color. It was a series of happy accidents. I, I wanted to do color, and I was trying to do color, and I was failing miserably. Um, there's a, a real high-end electric guitar maker whose shop is about 100 yards from here. And about 10 years ago, I called him and I said, you know, could I talk to you a little bit? And he was very gracious and, and um, talked about some of the techniques he used. And I took those techniques as a basis and have sort of adapted them into to what I'm doing. I use automotive colors. Um, I mix them in very small concentrations um, in with the, the lacquer. The technical term is called a toner. 
I don't dye the wood. The wood stays natural maple, but I'm tinting color and I'm putting that tinted color over the top of the wood so it gives it this depth and, and luminosity that really is, is impossible to duplicate you know, through a, a stain. I love 80s steel bicycles, and a lot of my color schemes are 80s steel bicycle color schemes. <laughs> what was that movie? The kid breaking away. What's that? Breaking away. Yes. Yeah. We're in yeah. here, you know, all day long, and even though the doors are open in the summertime, and the, 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 the you know, just to be out in the sun and, and just, you know, enjoying, yeah. you know, that hour of being outside and, and to, you know, mentally kind of get away a little bit from what we're doing and refocus a little bit. We've got a couple of 15 to 18 mile loops that we'll hit, and um, depending on how energetic we're feeling, it's about an hour that we're yeah. out and um, get back and get back to work. We're here.